Good evening, and welcome to the U Talk Show, where we desperately attempt to overcome the inertia caused by the failure to hit record for like two recording sessions in a row. Let me tell you, it's getting really depressing out here, but we are still dedicated to bringing you high quality pontification on the nature of the world. So, Kyle. Yes, the law. We've discussed the law a lot. Yes. We've discussed why it is an impediment to certain problems we wish to solve, how we could use it to solve problems. And we've occasionally drifted into that most timeless of debates. Does it matter what the law actually says, or do we need to take into account what it's meant to say? Yes. Lawyers, experts in communication that they are sometimes alleged to be, do not get everything right from the get-go. So what's more important, the letter of the law or the spirit in which it was written? Yes. Kyle, take us away. Well, see, when we first considered this question, my, you know, as my mind sometimes does, it instantly gave me the answer to how to fix all of this, which is have the spirit of the law written in the law. Have have <laughs> it have it written there. What is the spirit of this? What is its intention? So so many cases of of constitutional law not just in australia but throughout the world could be solved if there was essentially a foreword saying this is what this is meant to address this is roughly how we're trying to address it now i am actually funny enough a fan of original interpretation um when okay. it comes to laws and the reason the reason <clears throat> I, the only impediment to that rather is that sometimes we don't fully know the intention because and laws often have to be the written in such a certain laws way are dead yes you know and and that um and so that you know sometimes we have their writings to tell us what the intention was other times we don't and unfortunately laws especially these days are not written in in English, they are written in legal speak, or as some people call it, legalese. And so, what I think matters more than the letter of the law is the spirit of the law. Personally, I am firmly on the side of the spirit of the law. The intention of the law is what matters. It doesn't matter if your law should, or if 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 the law, if the letter of the law technically excludes something, if the intention of the law was not to exclude that. If the intention of the law was made at a time when that wasn't even relevant, then it is the spirit of the law that must prevail. That is my opinion. The spirit of the law is better. Change my mind. Okay, so it sounds as though you're looking at um, what my maths teacher would currently refer to as construction and what I would refer to as a logical inference, that where there is a case where the law does not explicitly state what must be, that we must refer back to the the frame and mind and the intentions of the people who designed those laws. Is that no, correct? No, quite, quite, quite specifically quite the opposite, actually. I am saying where we have a written law that leads to miscarriages of justice, where we, have, where, we designed... have laws, where we have where we have laws that can be skirted as well you know like basically if there is a loophole but but using and abusing that loophole is against the spirit of the law is against the reason for the law's creation then in in my opinion that is a dishonest interpretation of the law itself because it is a dishonest interpretation of the spirits of the law, not just the and and even though it obeys the letter of the law, it still it still gets around the intention and the spirit of the law, and I think that is profoundly wrong. I think you may be uh, neglecting an important bit about law here, uh, misunderstanding, neglecting, observing it fail to work the way it should sometimes. Yes. So we have two sources of law, right? We have legislation, which is decided by Parliament and assented to by the Crown. Mm -hmm. And we have case law, 
which is where magistrates and judges have seen the legal arguments put forward and they have gone, you know what? The law is written in a way that makes this ambiguous or the law is written in a way which is clearly, clearly not working properly here. I am deciding this. Mm. And judges going forwards um, and lawyers going forwards are expected to refer to both because can I cut, can I cut in? these judges do have to do a little bit of original interpretation. If we have a law that says that you can't steal your neighbor's chickens mm. and you say, but your honor, I didn't steal my neighbor's chickens. That was a duck. Then clearly, clearly the spirit of the law is that you don't deprive your neighbor of their livestock. And a, a judge in this quest in this case would refer to an original interpretation and say, well, obviously the people who said that you shouldn't steal things didn't have ducks. So give the duck back, you dipshit. But, you know, in legal aids. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, and there's also a thing here is we're not just talking about a ruling. We're also talking about arbitration now. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm not I'm not sure if we if if it's right to give judges the power of arbitration in a in a matter where the law does not fully cover something where the written law doesn't fully cover something but that we is the way it is for that that is the way it is and we do have appeals we do have processes to help make that work better if if there is a belief that a miscarriage of justice has happened. Yeah, but there's also another However, tool which is interesting here, right? One one, one moment just before mm. that. Because, and I'm not saying we should change it specifically, because that is, that is the way it is nonetheless. But I do think it is important to make the distinction between a ruling and an arbitration in this regard. Because an arbitration... Essentially, that is that is not a decision about what is written. That is a decision about what should happen. Yes, but we also have some other interesting things. Um, have you heard of a case stated? Uh, no. A case stated Are you is speaking uh, legally usually... now. Yes. Okay. It's then usually in criminal that. proceedings. And what happens in a case stated is that the prosecution and the defense actually agree on a lot of the facts. And they also agree that the law is really weird here. And so they go to a higher court specifically to say, hey, um, can you please clarify what the hell is going on with the law here? Can you please issue an opinion because the law doesn't cover this case and we want a more solid legal grounding going forward. And again, to, to refer back to your idea of uh, original interpretation, um, a Supreme Court responding to a case stated, and these are quite rare because they require defense and prosecution agreeing on enough of the facts and enough of the relevant laws. Um, when these come down, these are sort of added to case law because they're saying, look, yes, um, well, clearly, clearly the person who wrote the law against stealing chickens didn't consider the possibility of ducks. But, you know, a cow is an entirely different animal and a cow is nothing like a chicken or a duck. So, you know, what would the person who designed this law want? to do about a stolen cow? What would the society in which they lived think was right to do about a stolen cow? What is right to do about a stolen cow now? Hmm. Cow now, how brown? Uh, yeah, we'll see that that in a sense. So I guess part of the responsibility the judges have in that regard is to arbitrate. And so yes. hmm, it's very interesting. Something that I hadn't considered when we asked this question. Well, the reason I'm bringing it up is that I actually think that the letter of the law matters a lot. 
um, because actually for, for the same reason as you fundamentally, the letter of the law can permit for miscarriages of justice or perfectly deliberate carriages of injustice. And I think that it is vitally important that laws be scrutinised and revised, not only for clarity's sake, but that so that the law can continue to be reflective of society's requirements for justice. I, I do agree with you there. Though it but would be I interesting the, to have let, a Torah me... Tanakh sort of situation where the there are increasing addendums with like dates and times and why <laughs> things were changed to yeah. inform of the spirit of the law. Yeah, and we'll see that's that's I think you know, I mean, with with every bit of legislation that I that's passed, I think there should be a spirit of the law section telling us, okay. you know, what is what is what are the reasons why we're passing this law? What is it meant to address? How is it meant to work? Um, in more layman's terms, mm -hmm. and and I think that you know, when it comes to the letter of the law, if the letter of the law is insufficient, then I think the law should be changed. Um, however. If the if the letter of the law was trying to have a certain outcome, if essentially the spirit of the law is being skirted, if the intention of it is being skirted, then I think the spirit of the law should legally matter. Yes, absolutely. And this is sort of what I'm getting to. The spirit of the law does matter, but... Again, to use the very simplistic example of the theft of the chicken from the neighbour. Mm. The letter of the law should also matter, because let's jump forward a few years, where we have accepted that it is not permissible to steal chickens, or ducks, or cows, or horses, mm. or tractors, and we'll let's see. say that you've fallen in love with the neighbour's daughter. At one point in human history, daughters were considered property. An originalist construction might say that you are responsible for theft if you decide to marry your neighbor's daughter, at which point the letter of the law, the previous letter of the law, the constructions regarding property are being used to carry an injustice. Mm. And the spirit of the law in that case may damn well say that, yes, you've stolen your neighbor's daughter, now give her back. Mm. Because we have to accept that the spirit of the law at the time of writing, and this is, this maybe, is the failure with originalist interpretation. the society that it finds itself in. Yes. Mm. The reason that women were historically least, treated as property... Yeah, the reason that women historically were treated as property was largely out of an idea of benevolent sexism. They couldn't provide for themselves, so of course they should be someone's property, because if they were someone's property, they were someone's responsibility, and that responsible person should wish to prevent them from coming to harm. Mm. But, of course, we later found that it turns out that women can work just fine if they're paid appropriately. Mm. And so this original idea that women need to be property really has no defensible utility in the modern era. And so if we look back at these previous legal positions, we need to adjust them to reflect the norms of the society we now live in. And when we have the Magna Carta was written in the 1100s, 1200s, I think, you and is what? the basis for all common law. And think... some things have changed since then, and some things haven't. And continual revision to the letter of the law is a useful tool alongside explanations of the spirit in which it was written. And you know what? I think that I think that once again we've kind of come to the same answer for yet another question of it's complicated. It's always which, complicated. Which this is why the fifteen the minute thing doesn't work very well. <laughs> we we no, have like it. we keep it to fifteen minutes. We have like decided that what we want is a beautifully cooked steak, Diane, but we're giving ourselves chicken tendy time to appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, society yeah. is not full of simple problems. Well, Sometimes we haven't run it that is, far but over often time. they're a part of complex problems. Yeah, that we yeah. Well, we ha we have 
we have run over time, but not by that much. So I guess cool. we'll end it there by simply saying that both. Thank matter. you for watching you talk where we hope you have enjoyed a steak. Diana thought. Catch you later. <laughs> Ciao.